Josh Butt, Stephen McAvoy, our winners today, 28-28. They had a 615 in there, $10,000 richer, and congratulations. Wow. Welcome to the Winner's Tackle Box brought to you by Academy Sports and Outdoors. We've just finished up the second stop of the North Division Alabama Bass Trail on beautiful Gunnersville Lake. I'm joined here with the winners, Stephen and Josh. Guys, you weighed 28.28 pounds. Great job on what ended up being kind of a tough day. Tell us how you did this. We, uh, we went to a, a location that we just have a lot of confidence in this time of year and sat there all day and, you know, grinded it out. So just throw in, throw in a swim bait, um, a little bigger than what other people were throwing around us. So, so you fish in this area, and, and it is kind of a well-known area, but, but obviously a lot of guys fish this during practice yeah. that don't have confidence. They either hit it at the wrong time or they're not doing the right thing. Tell us a little bit about what you do different and why you have the confidence you have in this area. Well, it's all about slowing down, too. So a lot of people... A lot of people will go and suspend fish because they see them on the graph. They're they're going and chasing bait. They're they're wanting they're wanting to uh, match the bait fish and go through the schools. But at the same time, if you're not getting hit on the initial fall from the columns because they're in the columns is what they are. You can see them on your graph, and they're suspended. But when they go and eat, some of those bigger fish will eat on the bottom. And they want it slow creeping. They want it, they want that thing to bounce off a rock. They want that. And, and another thing is you have to have the bait fish in there. You when those bar fish and yellow bass and gizzard shad when all that comes together, and when you start feeling them, you can go ahead and bank on you. You're going to catch a fish uh, at some point in a matter of 30 minutes. If somebody else catches a fish, we had, we were sharing at the spot with the same guy, but he was on the other side of the bridge, throwing against the current. We were throwing with the current, and those fish would be set up with their heads pointing against the current. So when that bait would come through, they would just come out. And we saw that in practice on live scope. Right. They would come out from the bridge pylons and chase the bait up. Just like and a missile shooting out of those pylons. It was crazy. It was unreal. And we was like, well. I think we can figure this out and, and, and do really good. You know, catch 20 pounds, probably. Now, typically in areas like this, there's a lot of other type game fish in the area. Right. What is what is the key to catch the largemouth and not, not get caught up in drum or different type species of fish? <laughs> well, in practice, we were using different techniques and catching drum and catfish. So we were kind of like, okay, we know there's bass there, so we can't do that so we're just we're going back to what we have confidence in and you know if the bites are there i mean they're going to show their stuff so yeah. and okay they, and they did real early so okay let's get a little more detail of these baits tell me about the jig heads and the actual baits that are on the jig heads well uh primarily we were using uh true bass uh screw lock heads which the gambler has tr uh, screw lock head in as well this is more slim uh, kind of streamline, streamline and, it, and it, if you cut the head off the uh, freestyle, it'll fit right in there to where it don't have any more a any more action than you want the bait to have. Right. So you want that bait, it, when it wobbles, it's head and tail opposite. So I think that's a big key too, instead of a big boot tail, like a true bass boot tail, right. we usually throw those, but it's, it's a subtle action. And I think that really, I think that really helps, and that three-quarter ounce head really keeps that bait down uh, instead of rising up and throwing 20-pound uh, just fluorocarbon, 20-pound fluorocarbon, um, seven-foot, seven-foot three heavies, and just going to town. What is the water depth you try to get this bait to run through? 28 to 30 feet, sometimes 15 or 16, just whatever the bottom is, you know, in that area. Okay. How much experimentation do you guys do with color? Not really much. There's no reason to. Uh, I, bait fish. I had to tie. I had to tie this one on. I had to put this one on a Stevens because I lost my last uh, white back. Usually the white back, you can go to any lake and catch them on a white back. It don't matter if it's a right. original mag draft or the freestyle. It's a natural bait fish. And I actually hooked uh, gizzard shad on the on the uh, white back exactly the same. 
Exactly the same. So you guys have basically, you've dialed in your technique where you're basically keeping it simple. So now you're just really focused on making sure where the bass are, what where they're at in the water column, and how they're going to react to your baits. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's it's kind of hard. I mean, you just, you just have to have confidence to fish it, you know. I mean, that's... Because a lot of people will pull up there and fish for 45 minutes and not have a bite and leave, but when you have the confidence, you can just grind it out. It's all a grind, throwing these, you know, bigger swim baits. So if they would have stayed in those 15 minutes, they might would have gotten two bites back to back, two right. six pounders. Possibly. It would have made, made all the difference in the world. Yep. Right. Great job, guys. These tournaments are not easy to win. Very stiff competition. You guys did it today on a tough Gunnersville Lake. You guys made it look easy, weighing in over 28 pounds. Great job. Thanks. Thanks. Folks, before you head out on your next adventure, be sure to stop by your nearest Academy Sports and Outdoor.